I'd like to start with a joyful, powerful image. I feel it really represents the power of opportunity and the culmination of my work over the past five years. But I'm getting ahead of myself. This is Daniel. Daniel is an 11-year-old boy who, like many, dreams of becoming a soccer star. He lives in the district of Oyan in northern Uganda. Uganda, for those of you who don't know, is a country in East Africa. It lies on the shores of Lake Victoria and is home to spectacular animals, but even more spectacular people who are warm, vivacious, and always ready to dance. The district of Oyan is perhaps best known as being at the epicenter of Joseph Kony's Lord's Resistance Army, which is accused of abducting thousands of children to serve as child soldiers and displacing two million people into confinement camps while entire villages were bombed and burned to the ground. Only in 2006 were the people of Oyam allowed to return to their villages just months prior to Daniel's birth in 2007. While Daniel has lived through relative peace, you can imagine some of the problems that might arise when growing up in such a community. It has had to overcome terrible trauma and suffers from extreme poverty, even in the context of Uganda. Perhaps for youth like Daniel, what they most lack is the opportunity to succeed. The opportunity to receive an education. Out of the 20,000 students that enroll in first grade in the district of Oyam, less than 1% of them successfully complete a basic education. The, dis the opportunity to be healthy. Less than half of, less than half of students in Oyam have access to clean water. And those that do often have to walk over three miles to and fro to, to get it. And the opportunity to have a job. Many people in Oyam, the majority, are subsistence farmers. And the capital, with its high paying jobs, is over six hours away, a distance that many will never be able to travel. You and I, however, are granted a multitude of opportunities. I'd like you to think for a moment about the opportunities that you've been afforded just in the past week. Perhaps you're thinking about the opportunity to attend a great school or to engage in extracurricular activities like sports or music or drama. Me, I've been given the opportunity to travel. In 16 years of life, I've traveled to just that many countries all over the world. My first opportunity to travel to Uganda came in 2014. My mom was working on a public health project in central Uganda, and I was invited to come along. Before I went, I collected soccer gear for my team and cash from my classmates that I would spend on school supplies for a school that I would be visiting on my trip. During my visit, the school organized a community soccer game and invited me to play. I often speak about that game as it was a turning point for me. As we played, I was effortlessly able to connect with my Ugandan colleagues. We didn't speak the same language, but we played the same game, we shared the same rules, and we shared the same goal of trying to get the ball in the net. Now mind you, most of these kids had never had any real soccer training. The field was littered with bricks and anthills, and these kids still did not wear shoes. But they were fast, strong, and determined. And I left that field feeling like they deserved more opportunities, like me, to play and improve. I promised after that game to be better. And that opportunity presented itself just a couple weeks after I returned home. La Cunada, the town I'm from, hosted a TEDx event, not unlike this one. At that event, I spoke about the power of global sports to bring people together, to break down cultural barriers, and to serve as a platform for positive change. It was also at that event that I started my first fundraising effort to raise $20,000 to return to the same community I had visited and host a week-long soccer camp that will provide Ugandan youth with soccer training, health education, healthy meals, and clean water. At the time, I thought it would be easy enough to raise $20,000. After all, it was just a dollar from everyone in my community. And it was for such a great cause, right? Well, that was not the case. Um, Fundraising is hard work. <laughs> Over the next year, I put out jars in local stores, held events at restaurants, attended fairs, attended classrooms, sold bricks, baskets, and everything in my garage. I took advantage of every single opportunity I had to fundraise for my colleagues in Uganda. And all of this effort did result in $20,000.
In fact, to date, I have raised over 10 times that amount, $200,000 for youth in Uganda, and I have formalized my efforts into a nonprofit organization, Reunited FC. And thanks to my work, Reunited FC was able to host its first community-based soccer camp in the summer of 2015. And since then, we have continued to hold events. Every year since then, we have, hoped, we have serviced 1,000 youth. So 4,000 youth have been reached by RUFC programming. We moved camp to Oyan in 2017, given the unique needs of the community and the presence of an awesome community-based organization, Global Health Network Uganda, to help sustain our programming throughout the year. Also, every year we have partnered from students from Makerere University, one of the top universities in Africa, and university students from here in the US. These university students partner to deliver the, our education programming and collect data about the students we are serving. Many of them return year after year to camp. And I believe that the Makerere students are truly the secret sauce that brings RUFC's activities together. They're smart, they're driven, and they provide the best role models for the young Ugandans they are serving. They are truly an example of what can happen when youth in Uganda are provided with the opportunity to be healthy and educated. As camp has grown, we have incorporated other services into the event, including providing HIV and other disease testing to adults and vaccines for mothers and babies. We also collect data about our students. For example, this past year we found out that many of the students we serve do not believe that HIV is treatable, and that they also believe that mental health issues are the result of witchcraft. This highlights the need for adolescent targeted programming and helps us develop the curriculum for our camp. The effect of camp, the atmosphere of camp and its effect on everyone involved is difficult to describe. There's a lot of fun and dancing, not to mention meaningful conversations and learning. I often get asked why I keep returning to Uganda and Oyang, and here's my answer. Honestly, I don't feel that I have a choice. RUFC camp is literally the best week of my life each year, and after such a powerful experience, there really is no other thing to say except I'll see you next year. We will host our fifth annual soccer camp this June. When we moved to Oyang, we identified Football for Good, an elite talent development training program based in northern Uganda. Their mission, to train, to identify and train the next generation of soccer stars from East Africa. They provide full boarding and schooling for their athletes and provide an opportunity to become a national and even international star. Their training is as professional as any club I've seen or been a part of in the US. So remember Daniel? Daniel was selected by his school to participate in RUFC camp this past summer. His talent on the soccer field was recognized by our partners at Football for Good, and on the final day of camp, they announced his opportunity to try out for their U13 Academy team. His mother came up and embraced me, one of the best hugs I've ever received. I was thrilled for Daniel, but in truth, I was ashamed and embarrassed to be given any credit. It was Football for Good's awesome program and Daniel's own talent that had afforded him this opportunity. Me, on the other hand, I've been providing every opportunity to be an athlete, a student, and a philanthropist. In fact, if I've actually done anything special over the past five years, it has been to take advantage of every opportunity I've had to advocate for my colleagues in Uganda. So since then, my perspective on charity has shifted. Small acts of kindness, like giving out new soccer gear while nice, will not change the future of these at-risk youth. Their clothing may be tattered, but their real problems do not lie with the holes in their clothes. Ugandans are smart, funny, talented, and driven, and what many of them lack is the opportunity to succeed. Don't get me wrong, we still give out thousands of pounds of soccer gear each year thanks to partners at Albion San Diego, but our organization now is more dedicated towards providing young Ugandans with opportunities. For instance, Football for Good provides um, the students that we serve the opportunity to capitalize on their athletic abilities. And also, every year we support, 
We teach hundreds of young women how to make reusable sanitary pads so that they can stay in school and receive degrees. It includes providing the volunteers that work for Ray United FC, crucial field experience and networking, professional networking needed to gain a job. We also provide hundreds of community members vital information about their health and treatments they need to continue to be healthy and contribute to their communities. And we've expanded to include opportunities outside of camp. We have developed cl school clubs in Uganda and here in the US. These clubs can network together, discuss shared issues, and work to find a solution. This picture here is, a, is of American high school students who traveled to Uganda with Ray United FC to help initiate a club program based around planting fruit trees to help improve dietary diversity. These students were part of Ray United FC's Youth Vision Trip, an opportunity we are affording to American youth to help improve their global citizenship and cultural competence. I'm happy to announce that students here at Temple City High School have taken advantage, taken advantage of that opportunity to establish a club and are working with Loro, Se Loro Secondary School in Oyama. We also support a small number of Ugandan students to attend top private schools. I believe that all kids in the world are deserving of the opportunity to be healthy, to be happy, to play sports, to dance, to love, and to eventually succeed in a profession. I believe when youth are afforded these opportunities, that, they can, that we will see communities flourish in Oyam and all over the world. I hope you will take advantage of your own opportunities to help underprivileged youth all over the world learn, love, and fulfill their potential. Way Thank you.